In this video, we're going to start looking at angles and triangles and many of the relationships that are found there. And we begin with some vocabulary. The first three words I want to look at are acute right and obtuse angles. Now, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. It is a very small angle and generally when we're talking about an angle measure we're talking about how wide open it is. When you have a right angle the two lines form an L or you can say that they are perpendicular to each other and usually we put a little square at the vertex to signify that these two rays, I probably should identify these two rays, are forming a right angle. An obtuse angle is one that measures more than 90 degrees and it's open rather wide. Now, we also refer to complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees and supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. Now often students get these two confused and I just like to remember that the supplements are the larger ones. If you're in the army and the supplements have arrived you've got more things having arrived and therefore that is the larger of the two. Now, if our directions say to find the complement of a 40 degree angle, basically you're saying, okay, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. And so you're saying 40 degrees plus what is going to add up to 90 degrees? And so our answer is going to be 50 degrees. If instead we were asked to find the supplement of a 40 degree angle, then we would say 40 plus 140 degrees is equal to 180. So we would say that 40 degrees and 140 degrees are supplements of each other. Often we like to name our angles and if we look at this first angle that I've got measured at 40 degrees, we can name that angle BAC or angle CAB. Notice how the middle letter is the vertex A. Likewise, this 25 degree angle could be called angle CAD or angle DAC. We could not refer to it as angle A because there are actually three angle A's. You've got that 40 degree angle BAC, the 25 degree angle CAD, and you've got the combined angle BAC. Now we can add angle measures together. So if I want to say the measure of angle BAC plus the measure of angle CAD will equal the measure of angle BAD. And the measure of angle BAC was given to be 40 degrees. And then we can add to it the 25 degrees for that lower angle. And together that will become 65 degrees, which will be the measure of angle BAD. A very important theorem is that the sum of the angle measures in any triangle is 180 degrees. So in this given triangle, by having this little square up in the corner, I know that that right angle measures 90 degrees. And we have labeled here that this bottom left corner angle measures 70 degrees. When I add this unknown angle X on, those three will always add up to 180 degrees. So if these first two combined become 160 degrees, then X must be 20 degrees to add up to 180 degrees. Now this is not true for just right triangles. This relationship of the sum of the angles adding up to 180 within any triangle works for any triangle. Now we were just looking at the angle measures. Now we're going to change and start looking at the lengths of the sides. Now the short legs of a right triangle are known as the legs and the long side of this right triangle is called the hypotenuse. Now 
Quite frequently we use the letters A and B to represent the legs, and we use C to represent the hypotenuse. And the Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared will equal C squared for any right triangle. Now that actually works in two directions. If A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, then we know that we have a right triangle. But if we're told that we have a right triangle, that will also work in the other direction and tell us that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So let's pretend for this triangle that leg A is 6 units long and leg B is 8 units long and we're trying to find the length of side C here. Well, the two legs, we're going to find the sum of their squares of their lengths, which would be 6 squared plus 8 squared, and that will be our unknown value C squared. 6 squared is 36, and 8 squared is 64, and the sum of those two squares is equal to 100. So 100 is equal to C squared, and if we square root each side of the equation, that we find out that C is 10 units long. In this next triangle, we are given the length of the hypotenuse, and we're asked to find the length of this larger side. Well, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, and that C is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is 13, and our right side of the equation will be 13 squared. Now, it really doesn't matter which side is A and which side is B, so I'm going to just begin with 5 squared plus x squared. I'm going to use the letter x because that's what's labeled up here in our diagram. 5 squared is equal to 25, plus this x squared is equal to 169. And if we subtract 25 on each side of this equation, we find out that x squared is equal to 144. Square rooting each side of the equation, we then have x is going to equal 12 units long. Since I've mentioned square roots, let's talk about that for a little bit. Let's say we want to find the square root of 64. We're asking what number multiplied by itself makes 64. And the answer is 8. This is true since 8 squared is equal to 64. If I need the square root of 100, that will equal 10. Why? Because 10 squared is equal to 100. Now, numbers such as 64 and 100 are perfect squares. That means they have values that, when multiplied by themselves, come up with these nice, clean numbers. If I wanted to find the square root of 35, however, there is no number, no whole number, I should say, which when multiplied by itself makes 35. We know that the square root of 36 is equal to 6, so we can estimate that the square root of 35 will be just under 6, but we'd either have to use a calculator or just leave it in radical form. And when we get into an algebra class, we'll talk about how to simplify radicals that are not perfect squares. But for now, this is all you need.